good afternoon, Amsterdam. Um, thanks a lot to be here. We feel honored again to stand on this stage, um, even if it's a Friday afternoon and people are rushing home. So we are here from Miromico, and uh, we have been presenting last year our strategy on ramp up. Miromico is a hardware supplier. We are for more than 17 years on the market. We are currently highly focusing on IoT sensors. We have a booth, and many thanks for visiting us at the booth. We had plenty of nice talks. Um, while we were talking last year about how to make the first 10,000 sensors, well, in 2019, we have been producing and selling about 50,000 devices. Currently, we are planning our quarter million devices. And it surely comes with problems and challenges. And that's one of the reasons why today we will be talking about automated testing. Hi, from my side as well. I'm Alex Raimondi. I'm the director of Embedded at Miromico. Um, I'm also co-founder of Chipping, where we also uh, face the challenge of um, bringing a golf ball into the market with Bluetooth. We started uh, this year with a series of 5,000, and by end of year we will be ramping up into the range of 50 to 100,000 balls. So also there we face the challenge, and I'm happy to provide a solution or a, a, this, our strategy how we can tackle down those uh, fast scale-up in IoT. Um, my name is Sheke Fate. I'm, as you heard, responsible for the business development at Miromico. And, uh, well, I have a profound background in microelectronics and currently pushed more and more into the business. Well, what we tend to say is whenever you have your manufacturing ready, the next step um, is you have built a biscuit factory so you can uh, put as many biscuits out as you can. The next step is actually to build sales channels and sell as much as you can. Um, at Miromico, just uh, in order to give you a quick background on Refresh, um, so Miromico is uh, for more than 17 years on the market. We have uh, three teams. One team is doing chip design, the second team is doing embedded uh, design, and the third team actually is highly specialized on the Internet of Things. So we are doing hardware and we stop actually there. We are not concerned about connectivity and software platforms. We are collaborating with partners um, like Portonet, Avalon, Insta Solution, and so on. And we have in the background also manufacturing partners. Um, we do the production within Switzerland or together with Swiss partners where the final assembly is Swiss-based. We have highly automatized uh, manufacturing. We are price competitive. And uh, we have devices. Around 10 of them are going into mass production. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we spent uh, highly in 2019 in um, testing, testing setups. Because we see that whenever you bring the sensors out on the field, especially when you have 10,000 of them distributed uh, in different geographical locations, uh, maintenance is a major issue, and especially failures could cost um, your company by the end of the day. It can be even more costly if you ramp up higher in, from the 10,000 into the 100,000 devices. And then into, if you go into millions, then you have to invest more and more and do it like strategically in order to cover as much box as possible. And so what is happening? We are facing more and more sensors on the field. And we have to find ways, like one of our customers, uh, Portanet, with the cycle counter, which is also on the wall of fame. 
Um, the demand is increasing on a daily basis and more and more customers want to have the sensors. And we have to have a kind of controllability. We cannot just give out and hope that sensors will work, especially when um, we have an aggressive scaling. Our manufacturing partners are ready to scale accordingly. We can deliver. We have the sales channels in the background. And we have to control the short time to the market. Like the last product that we did, we had about five weeks from conceptual phase to a first 500 products on the field. So how did we do that? We were working with our partners. We did uh, 3D printing for the housing. Whatever we had as competences or building blocks, we put them together to build uh, the device. And handling a new product within five weeks is challenging. And then from 500 to the first 10,000 unit production tests. And especially since uh, over the air update is not given yet, we have to make sure that whatever goes out will survive, especially when we, have, when we are promising our customers 10 years of battery lifetime. We give them warranties. And in some of the cases where we have highly integrated sensors, we cannot exchange batteries. We claim to say that our sensors are, in some cases, while we have highly integrated sensors, recyclable. So these kind of issues we have to foresee and plan properly and also act properly as a, I mean, take responsibility whenever something happens on field. And the total cost of ownership by the end of the day needs to be reduced. And our head of IoT, Marcel Wappler, um, claims to say, where he is also right, Whatever is not tested will surely not work. It's a pretty simple formula. And we are experiencing that on a daily basis. And uh, possible fuck-ups that we will have or we are focusing, it's uh, actually uh, not very politically correct from us that we put Ariane 5 next to the fuck-ups that uh, simple type conversion in software costed millions. And whenever we claim that we will be producing a quarter million devices by the end of this year, from not forecast, but this is actually what we sold already to the clients, for us, uh, we, every fuck up with the high volume could cost uh, the company by the end of the day not only our own reputation, but also the reputation of our clients. It could damage ecosystems. So potential failures in this sense is when batteries are failing, the hardware is failing, we have uh, typical use cases where we don't understand the um, behavior characteristic of the battery, or the connectivity is failing, while we don't have it under our control by the end of the day because we deliver hardware, we claim to say. So we have to build test cases strategically correct that the whole full stack solution is covered. And then our biggest customers in the market, they tend to say that security is an issue. Without security, data leak can cost reputation or business cases. <clears throat> and we have to foresee the behavior of our customers. We have, or we are planning, or we tend to know, we claim that we know how the behavior is, uh, that the customer is using the sensors. But by the end of the day, what we experienced is we have to also know or we have to explain how some of the sensors needs to be used, especially if you have the direct user interface with the sensor. 
And warranty is one of the issues. Everyone wants to have 10 years of battery lifetime and warranties. So it means we have to understand each kind of failure in the field. So all that said, what can go wrong on the field? We uh, will now go in more to details, but how we can tackle that, how we can manage all those risks and how we can bring sensors into the field which are of good quality and meeting the customer's expectation. So one thing I want to point out first is there are two different kinds of testing. We see design verification versus product testing. Product testing is what we do in, in, the, in the production when the device is actually finished in the development and it's just about creating identical copies of the very same device just to bring it into the field. I will focus more on the design verification, which means um, to make sure that the device and the system can fulfill all the requirements and is working as expected, and the device can handle all the, the environment conditions and all the, the, the cases it will meet on the field. In production testing, we just then verify that every device is actually built as it should be, and it's also using the, the right software, and it's just ready to be shipped to the field. And one important thing, which is also going, it's kind of a mixture with design verification and product testing is, we also have to, to verify the supply chain, especially when it comes to battery. If we test with one set of battery in, in the design verification, we also have to make sure that we always use the same good quality in production, which may, be, may, which may vary from, um, from batch to batch, especially if you're going for low-cost devices and try to squeeze out every cent out on the, of, the, of the bill of material costs. So how do we do, how should we tackle the systematic testing of IoT devices? So there is a, is a huge risk of, um, it's calling for a thorough testing of the devices in the hardware. We cannot separate testing of the firmware and the hardware. So we need to combine everything together and we need to make sure it's tested under, under conditions it will meet on the field. We need to do automated testing because there will be there is a lot of effort behind it which cannot be done manually. So we need to test over a, a certain amount of time. We need to press buttons over a long time because we are expecting sensors to live in the field for 10 years. So if we press the button every day once or twice, so this is quite a lot of pressure of pressing we would have to do and we cannot scale that up in a manual manner. So we are using the same or the, the, the concepts we are using from, from a software development, which is kind of continuous integration and also extended to hardware and firmware testing as well. We realize it's very important to also include the connectivity. It needs to be included in the testing. And this means not only with one, uh, for example, LoRaWAN network server, we're talking about a LoRaWAN specific sensors. We also need to integrate, for example, with TTI, TTI, with Loriot, with Actility and all possible network, uh, network servers out on the field, because it, it doesn't mean it, if, if it's work with TTI, it might not work with others, or vice versa. How do we do that? So we have created a testing framework. This is a big, the big picture of it. It has a lot of details on it. I will not go in, into all of it. So we're starting with a, with, a, with a more or less common build server where we test our, our daily builds. We run all different combinations and variations over um, on a build server just to see if everything is compiling. So this is kind of preventing somebody checking in something which is um, creating conflicts with someone else. What we created additionally on top of that is we are connecting the hardware to the continuous integration, which means we flash the firmware into the hardware. We have actual hardware devices in the production setup, in, a, in, a, in our test setup, where we can flash different versions of firmware. We can communicate with the devices, either using a serial port connection, or we can also inter interact with GPIOs and other ac mechanical actors. And the third part is we are also connecting them using a LoRaWAN network server of different flavors, different brands, and also connect those inputs and outputs into our testing system. 
on the build server or on the, on the testing um, server, we have a, what we call a pipeline. It defines our test structures. The test is um, split into different um, test steps. And um, each step or the steps or the pipeline is in, in different phases. And each, each phase has some uh, different steps. The phases are all, all running uh, sequential, and the steps can run in parallel. So we can have different firmwares running on different devices at the same time, all to, to bring down the, the testing time in total. And of course, it also gives us the, the overview or the, the, the insight of if something goes wrong, at what step, at, in what phase it's actually failing. So we can narrow down that or bring down the time to actually identify the error and or the, the mistake and uh, fix it. To, to realize all that, we had to create um, our spe specific hardware test setup. So we base it, base it all on a, on a low-cost NanoPi, which is a quite good performing uh, small uh, Raspberry Pi variation. We have created a um, continuous voltage and uh, current measurement system. We have automated fire firmware downloading. We can interface with the devices, and we can also connect to the LoRaWAN network server system, and we have a dashboard and um, database to store data and visualize data. A little bit more into the details, what our system is capable of. We can, I mean, the test system is not just a simple one NanoPi device. It's, we have a few hundreds of them in, in a testing setup, which means if the test setup needs an update, we need also to be, to be able to uh, push that update into the test system in a, in a very easy way. So we have automated distributed, distributed update of the testing system. We have created a low cost um, current and voltage measurement. We can measure the, the device current into a re resolution of down to five microamps, up to 300, 300 milliamps, which is needed for IoT devices, because every one of you knows there is a quite a, a high dynamic range used. Of course, we cannot verify the device down to the microamps, but in the testing system, we just want to know if the device is below a certain limit or if, if it's going into, uh, into an area like 20, 50, or 100 microamps where it shouldn't be. Of course, we can also measure the voltage, for example, for battery monitoring with a, with a resolution of up to 16 bits. Update of the device firmware. Um, UART connection and also integration with many connector, many mechanical actors I also already mentioned before. This is um, a few interesting images out of our test setup. On the left side, we have a test rig where we connect all the nanopies connected to the hardware um, in our test network. The, the lower one is the, the cycle counter we saw before, which is ready to scale up um, in a battery testing. So we, we do battery cycle me measurements. And the third product is our post home button, which is already in, in uh, high production, where we had to test button pressures and actually guarantee, or to, to in, the end, in the end, to be able to guarantee the lifetime expected by the customer, which should be 10 years. And Using that setup, we could also verify different batteries from different suppliers to see which one is performing in which way, and so also to select the sweet spot of a battery compared to pricing and performance. We also focused on two, uh, on two different variations of testing. One is the short time testing, where we want to we wanna verify more or less that the, we, if we create commits in, in our uh, repositories that we don't create side effects in other projects because we, we, only, we don't only have one project. We have probably like 15 or 20 parallel projects running in parallel, which are all working more or less on the same stack framework. So if the GPS tracker guy is checking something in, we want to make sure it doesn't create conflicts with the humidity sensor guy. And that's why we need to run continuous integration on directly on the build server to just compile all the project based on, on, a, on a commit that's coming in. We also test co connectivity in an automated way. So we join the devices in the, in the test setup. We test uplink. We can receive the data from the LoRaWAN network server. And on the other end, we, we get the data actually sent by the sensor over a new link output. And we can match those two to see if 
what we receive on the, on, the, on the data end is actually that what the sensor was sending. We do, we do not si simulate sensors because in the end, if you do a simulation with everything, you will basically test your models and not what actually is running in the field. The other way around applies the same, downlink and interpretation of the downlink by the device is also tested in our setups. Sensors, buttons, everything needs to be tested. Um, in the end, finding conflict chain, conflicting changes, see that everything is running smooth and, uh, and perfectly is the, the main key of the short time testing. On the other end, there is long time testing. Jacob already uh, introduced that we, ha we are developing sensor for, with battery lifetimes of 10 years within like, let's say half a year. So there is no time to actually test the device over 10 years, which would be the safest way to do so because after that, we can actually guarantee that we have seen a device performing for 10 years. Battery is one of the biggest issues in battery in, in a wireless system because we, everything is running on batteries and if the batteries are failing, the entire system is failing no matter how good the software is written. So we are doing battery measurement tests. We are cycling the batteries, but we have to make sure that we do that in a way that we don't create false negative um, results because if you stress the battery too much, it's not what we see on the field because there it, the situation might be a little bit more relaxed. Of course, we can also do battery lifetime calculation and we use both of them, the, the actual long time testing where we stress the device, comparing with what we do in calculation to see if the results are actually matching. And of course, there will be some overhead in the end and the, just to find the pricing sweet spot. We try to simulate real users, uh, user scenario. We also try to introduce some randomness into the test because no device will be used in a very uh, autonomic way or automated way in the field. Users sometimes behave crazy. You don't know what they do with the device. We have button device where we don't expect users to push the button for 10 seconds, but we found out it's happening on the field. So we need to make sure there is no that this will not create any issues, and we can do that with some specific test case to see how the, the device would react on certain behavior of the user. And of course, we can do uh, constant current or continuous co current and voltage monitoring on the device, so we can see that even if a slight software bug, which would be probably go unde undetected, will not bring the device into a stage where it's not using its expected one or two microamps, if it's, it, can, it could be that the software will be or will, will remain in a state of higher current for, for, a, for a longer period of time, which would create the battery to fail in the field much, much earlier. So with long time testing, we try to catch race conditions based on timings, also based on interaction with the network, uh, LoRaWAN network server, and of course, the general stability of the device and of the hardware. Automated testing will, of course, create a lot of data. So having a ma many data, you will not see uh, the tree because of the forest. So it's, we have to find a way how to analyze data, how to probably also create alarms based on data. So we have um, created a dashboard. We have a database. We store the data over, uh, over a certain amount of time just to be able to look into the details and also find issues. We have, auto, we have implemented automated analysis, so we can create triggers, we can um, define rule chains on behavior of the sensor we expect, or ex uh, in some certain test case, we can actually define what we want to see and how we expect the sensor to react on a certain action we bring into the test. And based on that, we can um, run the test automated and once the, the, the sensor is going into a, an unexpected state, it, just, it will just create notifications. To summarize key facts about the testing, failing in the field is much more expensive than testing. Of course, if you, if, as a project-based company, we have to discuss it with the customer. They have to realize that. It's not, it doesn't help to push into proof of concept and fr from there right into the scale-up without doing the proper testing. Same applies, of course, for implementing security. Nobody wants security in a proof of concept, but in the field, you will need it. 
So there needs to be the time or at least the understanding that there will be a, a, a step where we have to do implement the security. One recommendation is start early with testing. Don't push it too far away. Simple testing is better than no testing at all, even if it if implies some manual steps, which are time consuming, but it's always easier than to recall devices from the field with the potential reputation damage you will get. Don't forget to include your supply chain in the testing, especially when it comes down to batteries. Mm -hmm. Batteries have one um, bad um, behavior. You cannot test them in the factory. They will all work. Even the cheapest batteries, mm -hmm. they will work for the first two weeks. But later on in the field, um, you, you can surely tell which, which one is a good battery and which is not. And another important point is test the full stack solution, which is including from the hardware of the device up into the network of the LoRaWAN server, network integration, and all this, the stacks. Well, uh, once uh, we are talking about uh, testability, it's also good to know what we are actually doing with the hardware. And yes, we are collaborating with Lacuna Space on the next generation of LoRaWAN, especially for all our clients in the rural regions. Our sensors are capable to directly communicate with satellite. And since we, are, we have the competences to do highly integrated sensors, we are planning to shrink the size of the sensors. So ideally, the smaller, the better. Then by the end of the day, it's about business cases. So one of our uh, appreciated clients in the Swiss market is the Swiss Post, where we are working on the next generation of retail. And um, the beauty of IoT is about the use cases. I have no idea what is actually happening. Um, well, now it's not tested, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not tested. Um, well, um, we are fortunate in the Swiss ecosystem to have uh, our national communication provider, Swisscom, that is providing for us a national lower one coverage. At the same time, we have the Swiss Post uh, investing in new technologies where we have beautiful use cases. And uh, yes, we have the smallest LoRaWAN module, which we launched today here. And we will be giving out for our alpha clients starter kits with the new module is not anymore based on the SD microcontroller. We are diversifying our portfolio of products with also Renaissance and Maxim. And at the same time, since we see a huge potential in South America, we are organizing with our partner, Comcesa, the biggest LoRaWAN conference in Ecuador, Guayaquil, where we will hopefully see a lot of you guys again, where we will present newer technologies, but also technologies dedicated for that market. And as we see, there are potential of millions of new business cases. So thank you for your time and your attention. Yes, and thank you for this nice presentation. And we do have ample time for some questions or remarks, if you have, for Miromiko. Anyone? Yes, over there. I come over. Oh, you, you're much closer, so I'll start here if you don't mind. <laughs> Actually, you always have a question with each presentation, don't you? Hello. Um, the new Maxim-based uh, module that is announced today, is it available for customers to buy? Sure. After the embedded world, it will be available for customers. Our Supplier and distributor partner is actually Afnet Silica, and we will provide the, the, our technologies through our distributor. There was a question over here. Somebody, oh, that's you, yes. I'll, I'll get to you later on. Yeah. yeah, oh, hi, my name is Hanasis from uh, Abo Sensors. Thank you very much for uh, your presentation. 
I was really interested in uh, the testing part because uh, at our company we say we face the exact, exact same problems, current consumption, continuous integration, testing. Wouldn't you be interested in opening uh, your solutions? Because I guess more people have these problems. You need to know your build is running. You need to know that its current consumption is very low and it has some basic communication. We do that as well. But every time you have to write your own software. So open as default, right? Huh? Open as default, right? Yeah. So it would be nice if you could uh, open it. Or would you consider it as a byproduct? Um, we actually are thinking of creating um, some kind of um, product out of it, at least to provide it as a service. So maybe you visit us at our booth, we can have a quick chat. I mean, we are open to discuss concepts. But in the end, you know, it's a lot of knowledge behind it. It's a lot of effort in, in it. And it's probably the key to the, su to the success of the company in the end. So it's, it's, it's a very valuable asset we have here. Okay, I guess uh, that's clear. Well, we got a question here from Oliver. Yes, please stand up so they can see you because they're way in the front. So again, a question on, on the testing. So you mentioned that when things go bad, it can be a real catastrophe. So with your testing, how many times did you save your company? I don't know, we saved the world many times, but um, we know that we had issues in which we only found in testing. So main of, mainly of, this is kind of all linked to battery issues. We can do battery testing and at some point we just see that the devices um, are hanging in some, in some uh, special conditions, especially in LoRaWAN. You don't write everything from scratch. You have the LoRaWAN stack is coming from one side and some, sometimes you also copy device drivers together. There is also the errata sheet of some of the microcontrollers which you have to read thoroughly in some, in, at some steps. Um, so all this together and not everything made by yourself. Um, so at least, I mean, testing is worth it and we never, we never go out into the field without tested devices. Um, I have to extend here, uh, claim, uh, say, uh, well, we have uh, very uh, patient and good clients. And uh, one goal of uh, IoT is the close collaboration between us uh, with the clients in order to have also direct feedback from the field and learn with the client on the use cases. Any other questions or comments, remarks, theories, jokes? Anything you want to share? Oh, okay, thank you. Um, you. You mentioned the Lacuna project as well. It's of course a cool project, but not really big in size. But then again, putting your chip out in space, isn't that a test in itself? I mean, putting it to, to these high altitudes, um, do you get test results from them? I mean, it's a very unique situation where oh. it's used. Okay, this part is exactly what the Lacuna is providing. We do the, uh, the, the sensor devices on Earth. So they have the knowledge and they do the testing for whatever goes into space. Of course, they, they will have some kind of testing facilities as well. Because once on a satellite, you can never get it back. Yes. Uh, what, what kind of unique results do you get from a project like that? Um, we get a lot of attention from that. We know that we can tackle a lot of use cases which wouldn't be possible with just ground infrastructure. Or, I mean, it's in the end, it's total cost of ownership. If you have to bring up infrastructure, for example, to monitor a pipeline, it's just too expensive and you will never do it. So I think Lacuna is opening a lot of doors for um, those kind of use cases. Yeah, the final frontiers. Uh, you have anything to add to that? Um, well, by the end of the day, what we claim to say for our clients, uh, if you have a sensor without connectivity, it's worthless. So for us, uh, customer satisfaction is the highest priority. And we are uh, fortunate to have this collaboration with uh, Lacuna Space, that they enable the connectivity, especially for the clients that do not have the possibility to distribute gateways around the environment. And I think it will also be a, a very a key component for what we do in Ecuador or in Latin America, because their infrastructure is even, I mean, here in Switzerland or in Europe, we are very fortunate to have this kind of connectivity. We have telecom companies or TTI, TTN to invest in network building up. But over there, there is green grass. They have nothing and they have the use cases and we can tackle them with a system like this. Yeah. Okay, well. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Give a big hand. Thank you. To Alex Remondi and Shagat Fateh from Miromico.